So we welcome you all. I think I might steal this cross. Today we are talking about the cross. And um, so at your table, you have a beautiful cross there. Um, really fits the season that we're in, the season of, of Lent, which we just started a week ago. And so uh, why don't we bow our heads and we'll place ourselves in the presence of Christ. Lord Jesus, we thank you for the gift of your holy cross. And we thank you, especially for the suffering that you went through for our sake. Help us to continue to understand and to appreciate your cross as we also carry our cross. And bless our talk tonight and our sharing. As we pray together, our Father, who Lord art in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy name. name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. So I sound like I'm going through puberty, but that happened a while ago. Um, I just have a cold. So uh, hopefully you can, you can make out what I'm saying. Um, I tell this story because it's a really good one and it'll kind of fit um, to what we're going to talk about. But there's a story of a man who, um, he was really frustrated with his cross. So I think that hopefully at some point in your life, um, first you're aware that you have a cross, if you're not already. Um, but he really didn't like the cross he had. And so, um, so he went to Christ, I don't know if this is like in a dream or in a vision, and, um, and he said to Jesus, you know, I want a different cross. I told this story to my mom when I was in the seminary, and they were having, at that time, they were having some crosses in their, uh, in their life, as you can imagine, when you have 12 kids and 38 grandkids, you know. I mean, there's, there's one or two things that happen. So anyway, I was telling her this story one night, and uh, she really appreciated it, but I said, um, so the story goes, this man goes to Christ and says, you know, I want a different cross. And Jesus says, okay. So, <clears throat> so he takes him into a room and he shows him a room full of crosses. So we have the cross back there. Uh, there's a cross over here and they're different sizes. I have one in my hand. Maybe you're wearing one. I don't know. There's probably crosses throughout this room. And some are shiny, right? And some are kind of smooth. Some are rougher. Some are heavy. And that was the case with this man. He made his way through this room of crosses. And so he'd see one and be like, There's, that's no, no way, I'm, that's huge. I'm not taking that cross. And then he'd see a tiny one and say, well, I mean, I could do better than that. Anyway, he made his way thousands of crosses. He finally found one, brought it back to Christ, and he said, okay, I think this is the one, this is the one for me. This is the one for me. And Jesus said, that's the one you came in with. <laughs> so that's the reality is um, the cross is a part of our life. And when I say the cross, I guess um, we'll talk about what we really mean by that. But fundamentally, the cross is a suffering. You know, Jesus goes through a physical, emotional, mental, uh, spiritual suffering. And so, so when we use that, you know, take up your cross, usually we're, we're not talking about like, you know, take up a, a sunshiny day by the pool with a pina colada, right? We're talking about, you know, whatever, I'm sick or, you know, my family's having troubles or we're having financial problems or whatever, you know, we're, we're talking about some share in suffering. And so, so most of us, if you're sane and not insane, uh, you have a natural God-given aversion to that. So who here loves to suffer? Good, okay, so you're all, you're all sane, that's good. So Jesus isn't saying, you know, take up your cross because suffering's awesome, yay, suffering. Not at all. Jesus himself will struggle to the point, it says, of shedding blood. So I know there's a couple people who are nurses and, and I guess apparently they've done some studies on the passion itself 
and that there is a medical condition we're under extraordinary stress and you can google this i don't know the name of it uh, you can actually um through the pores in your skin you can shed blood so so jesus doesn't want to die he doesn't want to suffer he's not like a a, a masochist or something you know oh i can't wait yay no Jesus suffers for a purpose. The cross has a meaning. So we'll talk about what that meaning is, and then later you're gonna get a chance to go over and meditate on the cross. So um, for me, again, I've really struggled with the cross probably all my life, but certainly since ordination. When I was ordained, Archbishop Eldon Francis Curtis, um, all seven of us who were ordained in my class uh, you come forward and he holds in his hand and you hold in your hand uh, the chalice and the ciborium. And, and he says the words to you, um, um, imitate the mysteries that you celebrate, model your life on the mystery of the Lord's cross. Now, I was ordained with six other guys in the Catholic voice, they have all these cool pictures during all the different parts of ordination, one of the guys is blessing somebody, right? The other guy's hugging the priest who vested him. I'm the guy who's kneeling, the one picture I get in the Catholic voice, I'm kneeling, and it says in the caption, Father Tim Forget is saying, is saying, model your life on the mystery of the Lord's cross. I'm like, no, 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 I want the one where I'm like hugging somebody. You got the wrong picture. Put Mark Barron there, or Paul Hazing or somebody, right? But that's, you know, that's been, for me, part of my priesthood, the cross of Christ. Naturally speaking, I hate it. I'm just going to be honest with you. If God took it away tomorrow, I'd throw a huge party. You could all come. But it's part of following him. As I was driving over here, uh, it was just kind of sunset now. It's getting later. And so I'm driving. Did any of you coming from Randolph notice the telephone poles? because the cross is setting in the back. Sorry, the cross, the sun. And so it's like, <laughs> cross, 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 cross. I'm like, really, God, you know? Where's the resurrection? Is it down there somewhere? Right, so you can't escape it. If you're gonna follow Jesus, he promises it, right? If they crucified me, they will crucify you. If they rejected me, they will reject you. I promise you this. It's a measure of health in the spiritual life, right? So again, we're talking spiritual life. Uh, we'll just do a little exercise to make sure you're all awake. Everybody clap your hands. Clap, clap, clap. Okay. Thank you. I didn't even finish. That's awesome. Okay. That's your body. Okay. You also have an eternal soul. Right? You, each one of you has an eternal soul that will live forever. So that soul right, is precious. Your soul will live forever. And that soul has a life. And that life has to be guarded and nurtured to grow, to grow. So if you want to uh, get stronger, who here played football? And uh, back in your glory days, okay, when your coach wanted you to get stronger, what did he do? He sent you to the weight room, exactly. And he said, lift as little weight as you can get away with and not look wimpy, okay? No, right? You did resistance training, right? And you got strong enough, you could, oh, I can bench, I can bench 150. Okay, now we're gonna go 160. I got that done. Okay, now we're gonna go 175. And what you're doing is really tearing down the muscle, right? and you're building it up. It's the same thing. The spiritual life is an active, growing life. And part of that growth happens here at the cross. Now, the cross is not, it is about your human will, so you have to choose it. But the cross is fundamentally a work of the Father. Right? It's the work of God. And this is something I'm only starting to learn myself. Yes, you need to say yes to it. You can say no to it, just so you know. 
I mean, you're still going to have suffering. I'm sorry. I didn't make human ra the human race. But there's plenty of atheists who right now are dying of cancer. That's reality. They may not believe in God. They may not believe in the cross. They may not like it. They may think you're crazy because you're a Christian. But they're still suffering. So it's not Christians aren't chosen to suffer because they're Christians. Suffering is a result of sin, the original sin. And so the human race experiences suffering. Christ's suffering gives suffering meaning, and it gives it power. So meaning and power. So um, what, am, what am I talking about where it's a work of the Father? I think there's many things, and now as we get into farming season and pumping season and everything other season, planting and gardening season and running season and whatever season, right? Part of that is your initiative. Are you gonna get out and run or walk or farm or whatever you do? And you, again, you can always say no and do nothing, I guess. You know, especially if Bernie gets elected. I don't know, maybe, anyway. No, I don't wanna do anything and you'll still get paid, okay. So, um, but, you know, we, we find fulfillment in this. We want to do some work, some to contribute something. So, uh, so part of us are used to, if I wanna do something, I need to initiate my will. But, in the case of the cross, what gives the cross power is the love of God. Right, so Jesus isn't just like a super tough dude. Right, he's not a get her done Christian. Jesus is in love with his Father. He's passionately in love with the Father. And his desire to take up the cross is only because he knows it is the will of the Father. You know, Father. I beg you. Can you imagine fathers here in the room, right? Your son is coming to you and begging you, please, Father, let this pass. Take this away. Who wouldn't do that? And then you get to the, the question, you know, Father Tim, is God mean? You know, I actually was sitting yesterday with a woman who lost her 26-year-old daughter to cancer. And she asked me that. Why didn't God take somebody who's 90 and wants to die? You know, why? I think that will be the question that someday God will help her understand in his love. But there's no, it's not a mathematical equation it would be a, a disservice to try to do that. Never do that to somebody. A plus B equals your death of your daughter. It, there is no rationality to it. All you can do is say, you know, Christ is with you. Christ loves you. God, one day God will help you understand this. It's a mystery. Suffering is a mystery. But Christ gives it power and meaning when he suffers. Because he's never done anything wrong. I mean, it's so hard for us to wrap our head around that. Who is this Jesus person? Who is he? He's God. So the one person who could avoid every kind of suffering because he deserves nothing. Nothing but good stuff. Nothing but honor and praise and sunshiny days. He deserves everything. He's never done any sin. Never. And yet he chooses the cross. And I think because he wants to become fully one of us. But also it's the way in which we're going to be set free. It's the Father's plan. And so, so this is really what we're celebrating, is we're celebrating love. Has that ever, have you ever thought about that as you're doing the stations? You know, we adore you, O Christ, we praise you. And on the Holy Cross, you're redeeming the world. This is a love story. The love of the Father, the love of the Son, to desire to do the Father's will. So, um, and the stations, you know, as you go through them tonight, and maybe for those of you who are not Catholic, it might be the first time, the stations are the things on the wall. 
and they're not here, but in the church, in every Catholic church, there's these little placards. Sometimes they're wood and metal, or <clears throat> and they're mostly in scripture. There's about four that aren't, that are more tradition. Um, but they're mostly the scriptures surrounding the passion of Jesus and what happened to him. And they're a chance for us to meditate on his suffering. And I, I say that because it's super crucial that at some point in your journey, you meditate on his suffering. You know, if I asked you all, take, a, take like five minutes and write on a piece of paper your cross, I, you would give, you would take 15. <laughs> you know, because we all know our cross. But the, here's the problem with the cross. You know, if my cross is right here, Can I see you? Nope, not very good. So am I aware of your cross? No. Not very well. And sometimes this, I've been guilty of this, right? Oh, I know my cross well, but I don't know your cross, and I don't know his cross. When we meditate on him, there's tremendous power meditating on his words. What is he saying? What is he doing? Why is he doing that? That's the stuff of prayer. You know, what, what was it like when he fell on the ground and he's down on the ground? You know, what is he thinking about? Is he recognizing the fact that we fall? Does he feel that? When Veronica wipes his face, what's that like? Is it she who receives? I would, I would guess yes. I mean, she's the one who receives in that interchange, which is oftentimes the, the reality of the cross that I've experienced as a priest. Just in the last 48 hours, you know, to be with people who are dying, be with people who are grieving, to be with people who are sick, and to, to, to come bringing Christ in some small way to pray, you know, to try to speak with them, uh, to support them. And I found this in the seminary. We had to go out to the nursing home once a week. And you're busy, you're in graduate school, you don't have any time. And I used to be like, ah, it's Wednesday. Uh, got to spend four hours because you got to travel over there. And then we spend, whatever, two, three hours there and then go home. I always received far more than I gave. Far more. I always left feeling I had been blessed. It's a paradox, this cross. It's a paradox. When you take the, the place of a Simon of Cyrene, you know, when Simon carries the cross, Simon's the one who's blessed. Can you imagine? He's one of the first people in history to be covered in the blood of Jesus, the blood of God. I mean, that's, you know, Simon is the one who's blessed. So, so too, you know, we live different mysteries at different times in our life. So, so maybe I'll take, a, I'll take a little break, and I'd just like you at your table. Um, yeah, maybe just when you pray the stations, do you have a favorite station and why? Maybe we'll just start, because that's pretty, you know, everybody must say, like, oh, I like the one with Veronica, or I, I like the one with um, Simon. So maybe just take a second at your table, think about what is your favorite station or maybe the station you're meditating on now and, and a little bit about why. Why do you find fruit there? So just, we'll take a few minutes.